Hey guys, uh, I know I'm on a roll today, but I'm so behind on stuff. I wanted to answer, it's more of an accusation than a comment from this gentleman, Bray Giddish or Gwiddish. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, uh, but I will uh, answer your uh, comment. Let me see if I got it right here. It says, we seeing multiple places in the Old Testament, Noah, Abraham, it's not that you're not justified by your works, but your genuine faith produces works. This is a common uh, rebuttal against faith alone. There are two choices. One, we're saved. We get saved. We trust in what the Savior did. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. It is God's provision, the unspeakable gift, so great a salvation that we're reconciled to God through the death, burial, and resurrection of His Son. It's His blood that purges us from all our sin. Sin debt's paid for. Okay, we're justified in right standing, declared righteous uh, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace. Okay. Now, the other decision is, are we going to serve God? Are we going to be a disciple? And that is our reasonable service, and we should. But to say that genuine faith always produces works is not true. Sometimes somebody gets saved as a teenager and you start living like the world, but then you get serious about your faith later. You know, you can't say that it always produces works because there's the old man, which is the flesh. That guy is still there. And you still have free will. Then you have the new man. One born of God doth not commit sin. The seed of Christ is in him. And he cannot sin. That guy can't sin. He's positionally perfect. Uh, and we're sanctified by the offering of Jesus' body. That means declared holy by God for God. Then there's progressive sanctification, which is our growth. Growing in grace through the milk of the word and the knowledge of our Lord. Uh, as Peter says, adding this to this, to brotherly love, to charity. That's us growing, and that's progressive sanctification. That's the works, the growth, because we're saved unto good works, but not by them. So to say that faith always produces works, it's not true. You still have free will to either walk after the Spirit or the flesh, okay? Now, when it says those in the flesh can't please God, that means if you're trying to earn salvation by performance of the law, it's very clear that's what that means, all right? So... That, that is what salvation is. We're justified because we trust in what the Savior did for us. All right? It's not always automatic. It should be, but that's a matter of your witness and fellowship, not salvation. Faith is attached to promises of God and had to regeneration and the transformation in the heart. No, wait a minute. You're mixing the new man, the reborn spirit. He's perfect, okay? with some process of the flesh. The old man is still there. He's not perfected. You put him under subjection because it's your reasonable service. That's not something that automatically happens. You're mixing the old man and the new man. That's why we're supposed to reckon ourselves dead. This guy is supposed to be considered dead, okay, so that we live in the new man and we walk in newness of life. It says we should. We're, behold, we're a new creature, Okay, that's not a lot of stuff got better, and as we grow, we get better. No, the reborn man is regenerated. It's a completely different person, and that is who God sees us as in his son. That's our positional standing. You're mixing the old and new man. You're mixing the flesh and the spirit. You're mixing our uh, growth as a Christian with salvation, Jesus said, what's in the heart comes out. Yes, and what I see is a lot of accusation and self-righteousness. Please stop being a hypocrite if you want to use the... I, how am I a hypocrite? I don't lift me up at all. I don't give you standards that I myself don't keep. That would be a hypocrite. If I told you to do something, yet I do it myself. That's hypocrite. Do you, do you know what that means? It means I'm... Make telling you to do something that I myself am not willing to do. That's not true. All right. If you want to use the Greek word repent, use it for the tenses and use it as a source for meaning. I've done videos on this. There's three words in Greek that are translated to repent or repentance. One is metanoia, which means change of mind, or metanoia, change of mind, noun or verb. Then there's metamalami, which means to be regretful or sorry. Okay. Then there's the word I can't pronounce, 
which means irrevocable, like the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That means he won't take them back. They're irrevocable. So I use each one, and I explain scripture in context every time the word repent is used. So, uh, And I use scripture to prove that context. When Paul says he commands all men everywhere to repent, what's he talking about? Idolatry. He says he winked at your ignorance. God doesn't live in temples or in things made with stone. He winked at your ignorance, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. That means to trust in the living God and not in idols. So uh, when Peter said repent and believe, they had just crucified the Lord. And he said, this same one you crucified is both Lord and Christ. They were pricked in their hearts. And he said, what should we do? And he said, repent and believe the God. Change your mind and believe the gospel. You just killed him. Now believe on him instead. Every time it has to be uh, preached in context. And he says, uh, easy believism is, okay, why, first of all, why do you need salvation to be hard? Has it ever been hard for you to receive a gift on your birthday? If somebody hands you a present, happy birthday, you go, oh, no, that's too easy. Nope, nope, can't do that. That's easy uh, believism. It's counted to us for righteousness when we believe God. It's count. Believe the report God gave of his son that he gives us eternal life and that life is in his son. It's not easy for me to say, I fall short of God's glory. The law made me guilty. God's standard of perfection is something I can't achieve no matter how much I clean up my life. So I'm trusting in the living God to save me. I'm trusting in his blood. I'm putting my soul in his hands. That wasn't easy for me. But it's not hard to receive a gift. And I don't know why people need it to be hard. Why? Why would a free gift be difficult? I, I don't understand it. The way is narrow, not because it's hard, but because it's straight and narrow, because Jesus is the way. He is the only way. And few be that find it. Very few trust only in the finished work of Christ. They still trust partly in themselves, and I fear that's the case here. And he says, uh, Easy believism is another flavor of the lie that you can be your own God. Absolutely not. That's me saying, I'm not good. And so I need God because he's my salvation. Did God really say the soul that sinneth shall die? Yes, he did. And praise God, he carried my sin in his own body and gave me his righteousness. And if you're saved and you continue in this some crazy straw man sinful lifestyle without, you know, any kind of care for it, you'll suffer consequences, and it can lead to physical death. Uh, it says, did Jesus really say that all things that offend will be damned? Not quite. That all those that do not submit to his rulership will be slain? No, you're, you're trying to add your works of obedience by the obedience of one. Through one man, Adam all died. Through one man, God in the flesh, all live. It's that simple. Uh, I don't know why you want it to be hard. Uh, do you think you qualify more? I see here you've got a thing about uh, you, you rightly accuse Lordship Salvation of being Pharisees, but not the ones that realize salvation is by the power of God. And since it's a hard issue, you cannot disqualify the year. All right, here's the way people backload works. It's not me doing it. It's God. Well, the Pharisee said, thank you, God. I'm not like that sinner over there. He went away unjustified. He gave God credit. It's still not about your works, whether you give God credit or not. It's about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the gospel that saved us. I'm not a Christian liberal. I'm a biblical, blood-bought child of the living God who trusts in my Savior. And when I turn from trusting in my own dead works and trusted in Christ's work, I did repent. Because I changed my mind about who Christ was and how I could get to heaven. Let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. So you're telling me here that you're living a life of willful rebellion according to... How do you know what rebellion I live in? Do you know anything about how I live? And even if you did, even if I did, what is my behavior have to do with my salvation? Nothing. Uh, anyway, I'm out here every day preaching Christ, getting people to realize his love for them so that they will serve him out of love and not fear. 
He tells us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And since the Bible uh, uh, explains itself, I looked up. How do we work it out with fear and trembling? See, the salvation is in. We should work that out. You can't, you got to have salvation to work it out. And then it tells us in the Old Testament, serve with fear, rejoice with trembling. So we work our inner salvation out by serving and rejoicing. So uh, you say that my, my understanding of justification and sanctification are not biblical. We're going to look at that. Okay, I will allow, I will listen to you, and I will allow Scripture to answer that. Uh, it, apparently, you have an issue with that. If we sin willfully after receive the knowledge of the truth to remain more sacrificed for sins, I'm not sure you understand what Hebrews is talking about. The book is to Hebrews, and it was about them returning to the Levitical law and animal sacrifice. Now, if you willfully sin, by rejecting the once-for-all sacrifice for Christ and go back to animal sacrifice, there is no more sacrifice for sin. Why? Because Christ died once for all and God won't accept those animal sacrifices. So there's no more sacrifice for sin because Christ died once for all. And when you deny that and willfully sin by rejecting that sufficiency, which is, I fear, maybe what's going on here, then you trample the Son of God underfoot you call the blood of the covenant by which we're saved an unholy thing. So uh, that's what willful sin means. It doesn't mean if you sin on purpose, you sin away the blood of Jesus. Context is everything. You say if you're a friend of the world, you hate God, and that's what the verse means. Well, in a sense, that's true. But what he says is more if you love the world, like I don't. My thing isn't to gain things of the world. He has put in me a desire for him and things of the spirit. But that is a spiritual maturity issue. And the world believes in works. Be good, get to heaven. But none are good. That's the problem. All of us fail at God's standard of perfection. And so we need God's perfection. When he said, be perfect for Father in heaven's perfect, how are you perfect? Well, you're perfect because God imputes his perfection on you, his righteousness, because you trusted in his son. I would like to ask you, first of all, do you think you've repented of all your sin? Uh, secondly, where do you get the idea I'm in willful rebellion in my life every day, since I'm studying scripture and preaching the gospel and Christ to everyone? Uh, thirdly, what would my behavior have to do with salvation anyway? Uh, also, what do you think that willful sin means in Hebrews? Because apparently that's not uh, correct in its context. And also, what do you think Jesus accomplished on the cross? If he didn't accomplish saving us and we simply received the free gift, why do you need the receiving a free gift to be difficult or hard? And if it's grace, then it's no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. If it be of works, it's no longer grace. Otherwise, works no more work. It can't be grace and works. That's the whole point. For him that works is the reward no longer reckoned of grace, but of debt. For him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So because I believe God and I trust in him, I know in whom I believe. He'll never leave me or forsake me. I'm at peace. I got peace with God. Now, if I want to, uh, I want to please my dad. I want my dad to be proud of me. I want to serve him. See, the fact that I know God loves me and has me makes me want to live for him because he loved me so much. Those forgiven much, love much. So I'm not sure why you call me a hypocrite and that justification that I teach is not biblical because I'm going to give you the verses right now. Um, love which is manifested by obedience, not hitting him in the face every single day and saying that you love him and that you're sorry and use analogies from family and don't take others in account and how family would deal with you if you want to do that with your mother every single day. Who has ever said, once you're saved, keep hitting God in the face? I've never promoted disobedience to God. I've said separate the free gift of eternal life and rejoice and 
give God glory for saving you and giving you that free gift. And because he saved you, it's your reasonable service to live godly lives and to put others and God first. I'm telling people just don't trust in that, that you're saved unto good works. That's our purpose. But don't trust in your doing those good works and that it doesn't prove you're saved at all. AA changes your life. Buddhists have great self-control, live very holy lives. doesn't mean you're saved. There, you, I tell you these things that believe on the name of the Son of God so you may know you have eternal life. Why? Because we know in whom we believed. We believe he saved us. And that is called faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Why would you despise a free gift? Why would you be resentful that it's easy? Why do you want it to be hard? If somebody gives me a present, why, would I reject it because it was too simple to reach out and take it? I don't understand that. So let's look at this. It, it, it'd be obvious if she wasn't delusional and you'll sorrow and your love is false. In the scriptures as we love him. Talking about the saints. So if you don't love him, you don't have him. Well, first of all, we're saved because God loved us, not because we love him. We're told that that uh, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that it's God's love that saved us. And because he loved us, we should love him. But our love is not perfect, and it doesn't save us. Now, you're talking about my justification that I teach isn't true? Titus 3, 7, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So, <clears throat> grace cannot be earned or qualified for. It justifies the ungodly, not those trying to earn it by being good and cleaning up their life. None of that has anything to do with getting saved. Grace means that you don't deserve it. You can't earn it. It is God's mercy, blessing, and forgiveness that you don't deserve. And if you think you're doing something to get it, it's no longer grace. All right? Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.24 Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Habakkuk tells us the just shall live by faith. The law was so that every mouth may be stopped, all become guilty before God, to be a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, to show us our need for a Savior. All right, Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed, easy believism, in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Justified, declared righteous and right standing with God, and your works don't do it. Not your heart condition, not how bad you feel, none of it. You acknowledge you're lost, you're not good enough. Christ died for you and you receive his payment for all your sins and you trust in him. You trust God is your salvation. Okay, Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 3.28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without deeds of the law. Uh, let's see. Philippians 3.9. And be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, And such were some of you, but you're watched, you're sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the Spirit of our God. It tells us in Hebrews that we're sanctified by the offering of his body. That means declared holy by God for God. Much more than Romans 5, 9, being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Romans 4, 2, For if Abraham were justified by works, he would wear of the glory, but not before God. Romans 4, 25, Who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. How are we justified? By his resurrection. His death, burial, and resurrection is what makes us righteous because we are in him by faith. It is his blood that makes us clean and perfect. The Passover, when the blood was put on the outside of the door, death passed over them. Was it because inside those people were so righteous and living right? No. 
It was because God saw the blood on the outside. Just like he sees the blood on us, it makes us clean, not because we are within ourselves, all right? Now, sanctify. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. We are made holy through the truth of God's word, all right? Um, and it tells us in Hebrews, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. That is a reference to the red heifer sacrifice, which was done outside the tabernacle, just as it was a foreshadow of Jesus being uh, crucified outside the gate of, the, uh, of Jerusalem. So we're sanctified, he sanctified the people by his blood. How are we made holy? Through the offering of his body, through his blood. Now, the positional sanctification is what I'm talking about. Progressive sanctification, as we grow while we're in the flesh, it'll never be perfect. But it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Okay? So, of course, we should have a progressive sanctification in the flesh as well. We're supposed to reckon the flesh dead. But the thing is, is that it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, justified and sanctified positionally is all a work of God. Now, whether you live your faith determines fellowship, Reward, just like in 1 Corinthians 3, you shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. These are reward issues, chastisement issues, fellowship, witness, testimony, that kind of thing. But salvation, eternal life, is a free gift. I, again, I'd ask you, why do you mock the glorious good news as easy believism? I don't tell anybody you say a prayer and you're saved. I say it's what Jesus did and you trusting in that, relying on that is what saved you. It's all what he did. So I'm not sure why I'm being accused. Uh, I don't know why people think I promote sin. I don't. I separate salvation from service. That's it. I hope I answered your questions and I hope you grow in grace. God bless.